a very good morning students in this video we are going to learn about one of the important feature of dsp processor named as pipeline this is pipeline let's see what is this pipelining is okay now as given here any instruction cycle whenever an instruction is executed it falls into one of these four phase, phases that is it has to come across all these four phases to complete the execution so there are four phases of execution of any particular instruction you can name it as fetch decode read and execute what is meant by fetch as i told first of all we have to fetch the instructions from the memory the particular instruction that has to be executed it has to be fetched from the memory can you say where this instructions will be stored we have two different types of memories right there is going to be a program memory as well as a data memory and always the instructions will be stored in the program memory so as a first step whenever a particular instruction or arithmetic operation has to be done has to be executed the instruction its corresponding instruction has to be fetched from the program memory that is the first phase and once the instruction is fetched then this instruction has to be decoded we have to get the opcode for it it has to be decoded and in the third phase this instruction that is during the third clock cycle during the first clock cycle it will be fetched from the program memory and during the second clock cycle it will be decoded during the third uh, clock cycle uh, we have fetched the instruction right now right then next step what we have to do is in order to execute that particular instruction we need a data so this data has to be data is otherwise called as operand right so data has to be fetched from the data memory that has to be it has to be read from the data memory that is the third phase of instruction cycle and the fourth phase once the instruction as well as the data is ready in the fourth clock cycle or you can say in the fourth phase this instruction along with the data will be executed and its output will be stored so these are the four phases that will happen for each and every instruction execution so and any particular instruction cycle it has it is going to have all these four phases or all these four cycles okay now if a particular instruction is executed without pipeline how it will be executed this is how it will be done as i told you i1 is uh, the first instruction that we are going to execute and i2 is the second instruction that we are going to execute so each instruction cycle has to undergo all these four phases so without pipeline if i take during the first four clock cycles during this first four clock cycles only the first instruction will be executed during the first clock cycle it will be fetched during the second clock cycle it will be decoded during the third clock cycle the operand or the data will be read from the data memory and during the fourth clock cycle it will be executed so here the instruction is executed sequentially in each and every clock cycle okay again if i want to go for the execution of the second instruction it will start getting executed only from this fifth clock cycle so i2 when uh, the execution of this second instruction i2 it starts only in the fifth clock cycle and again this i2 is going to take four different clock cycles so sequentially if in a program we have some 10 number of instructions we are going to have 40 clock cycles we need 40 clock cycles for execution of all these 10 instructions to happen this is the case without pipelining and this pipelining what it does is it provides some parallelism between the execution of each phase of instruction that is what pipelining is so when we use this pipelining concept how the instructions will be executed is it's clear here during the first clock cycle i1 is fetched that is instruction 1 is fetched now during the second clock cycle 
this instruction i1 will be moved to the decode phase. Now, since it has been moved to the decode phase, the fetch phase is free. The fetch cycle is free. So, since this is free now, we can accommodate the second instruction to be executed into this fetch cycle. So, during the second clock cycle, what it does is, instruction I1 will be in decode phase. That is instruction I2, it enters the fit cycle. So that is an overlapping. Previously, so, uh, till the four phases are completed, I2 has not entered the execution phases, right? It started ex getting executed only in the fifth clock cycle. But with pipelining, we are going to provide some overlapping of instruction phases so that simultaneously we can execute two to three instructions okay so here what happens in the third clock cycle as you can see during the third clock cycle the first instruction will move on to the read phase by that time decode phase will become free so we, what we can do we can move this i2 second instruction to this decode phase so when the second instruction has been moved to decode phase now during the third clock cycle, the fetch phase is going to be free. So what we can do, we can get the third instruction into this fetch phase. And what happens during this fourth clock cycle? Instruction I1 enters the execution phase. So read phase become free. We can move this I2 here. And what we can do, I3 can be moved to the decode phase and we can get the second instruction. That is the fourth instruction can enter the fetch phase as it is free now. So even in this case of pipelining, each instruction requires four phases. It is going to pass through all different four phases for execution. But the thing is, whenever first instruction completes the fetch phase, it moves to the decode phase and we can get the second instruction parallelly into the fetch phase. So if we do like this, then we can definitely reduce the execution time of instruction. And this concept is called as pipelining concept. 